going to be talking really about how uh, Microsoft's system center capabilities and Tripwire's compliance management capabilities bring together to deliver on this idea of operationalizing compliance. So Dwayne, do you want to quickly introduce yourself and Tripwire's solution? Sure. As uh, Paul mentioned, I'm Dwayne Melanson, huh? and I'm responsible for the Tripwire side of the relationship with Microsoft. And uh, a little bit about the company. We've been around since 1997, and we focus on security and compliance of heterogeneous data center infrastructure. And by data center, I mean broadly. Everything from endpoints, particularly for things like PCI, all the way up to servers, network devices, databases, applications, and other parts of the infrastructure that are responsible for delivering services. Now, uh, our focus has been on providing a very normalized view of compliance across this environment so that uh, what we do is actually take very detailed tests of configurations across the data center and we map those up into higher level constructs around specific regulations like SOX uh, for financial reporting compliance, PCI for data center, uh, for uh, rather credit card security, uh, HIPAA for healthcare, and you know, lots of government standards from NIST and DISA and other sorts of acronyms and mm -hmm. things like yeah. that. Uh, and one of the keys for us is that we can take a business control, you know, so uh, something as vague as ensuring that unauthorized change doesn't occur on a particular system, and tra translate it down into a set of specific tests that we can perform on various pieces of infrastructure to allow you to establish that controls are in place and effective and be right. able to do that on demand. And then when the auditors show up to have audit ready reporting so that they can see how you're controlling risk in the mm -hmm. environment. So if we look at something like, uh, let's take PCI, um, you know, a lot of the, uh, the people who will be watching this uh, who deal with operations and operations management, um, the, the, the policies that get put in place to deal with something like PCI really impact configuration, Sure. And the specific things. Can you give us an example of you know what, what would be a PCI configuration item that would have to be dealt with? Yeah, sure. So uh, for PCI, it can be something as basic as ensuring that password length and strength are mm -hmm. set appropriately across your systems. Sure. But you can also check for things to ensure that you know as new users are added to the Active Directory that they don't have access to specific systems that are inappropriate. Mm -hmm. Um, that people are not opening up new routes on firewalls, that, sure. you know, opening up a new port that's inappropriate. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of it gets down to really understanding, okay, how should things be configured based on our configuration standards? How does that relate to the requirements of the regulation? Mm -hmm. And then the other aspect of that is, how do I monitor that? Because, right. you know, one of the things is that compliance really isn't just a point in time. It's mm -hmm. more of, okay, we have a set of standards and we need to measure against those standards all the time. And right. anytime exceptions occur, we need to understand understand how they occurred and who to assign the work mm -hmm. to to get it resolved. Mm -hmm. So all of those things really sound like things that IT operations staff are going to have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. But I think one of the things that we've talked about previously is, is that um, a lot of the uh, policies and uh, requirements for compliance overall get set up by different people in the organization. Yeah. There's a security or a compliance officer who has to create those policies but then the operations staff have to, to deal with that. Mm -hmm. It seems like there's a gap there quite often between those two, two groups, if you like. Yeah, and, and a lot of times it shows up as, you know, operations people thinking that security is just, you know, they're the guys that say, no, they're trying to slow me down, mm -hmm. I've got a job to do, how do I do this? Whereas, uh, you know, security sometimes sees the ops guys as a little bit of a cowboy who's just trying to, you know, make changes and not ask anybody about it and not let anybody sure. know what's going on. And uh, we think that there's a good way that you can work um, kind of in the middle there, right. and which is where we focus, which right. is to say, okay, security and compliance and basically the oversight guys can set requirements and establish standards and implement the policies and controls to keep people accountable and, and keep things in compliance. And then operations really doesn't need to understand, you know, what are the specific requirements of SOX, what are the specific requirements of PCI, but they do need to know how that impacts configurations in the environment. Mm -hmm. So what we've done is we have uh, the world's largest library of out-of-the-box compliance policies mm -hmm. that allow you from an oversight perspective to establish basically a compliance scorecard sure. mechanism. And then as things become non-compliant, you can issue you know, almost like a punch list to mm -hmm. the operations team to say, okay, uh, these systems are now non-compliant, mm -hmm. and to make them compliant, here are a specific set of steps that you can take and go and implement, and it gets down to, I mean, very granular details so that you can have confidence that any member of the IT ops staff can actually take those instructions and 
perform work in a way that allows you to, to reestablish compliance. So you kind of describe this wonderful world where everybody gets along and everyone kind of gets a, an understanding of what the, 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 the requirements are and what the detail of it, and they are able to kind of look at that over time. But I, I think for, for something for our audience here, that the, the reality of how that happens is, is very important yeah. because, um, you know, the, if you look at how system centers are utilized today, you'll take the monitoring capabilities. And we're able to bring together kind of the view of a complete service. How it's yeah. performing, is it available? You know, that's the place that people are going to in terms of getting an understanding. And then we have kind of desired configuration management as one of the other things that mm -hmm. we can monitor over time. Like you're, you have a separate infrastructure and a separate system, but then the important information needs to get between those two systems that we're talking about. Yeah. We're talking about operational staff dealing with those things. So I know that we have a, a management pack that sure. enables us to bring in 